All right, welcome to the patch 2.4 update for my Poison Hurricane build. Um, so, important thing to, uh, to know here, I ha I've played this build twice, uh, once in the Talisman League when um, Blade Vortex originally came out, and then last League in Prophecy, which is the character you see here. This is the character I'm going to be using for all the gameplay, um, but I'm going to show you the other version because I've messed around with it. Um, so this is a version that uses Hatred, the other one is a version that uses uh, Dual Curse. Uh, but um, there's a few important changes that happened with 2.4. So the biggest one was the change to Blade Vortex. They reduced the maximum number of stacks from 50 to 20. So it's a lot easier to reach now. Um, but, but to give you more damage to compensate for that, they reduced the... Excuse me, they increased the damage output at high levels by 63%, which means that 20 stacks is equivalent to uh, about 32 and a half before. And most builds didn't run more than 10 to 15 uh, when around maps in terms of stacks, so this is a huge buff there. Um, and it doesn't really hurt against most bosses because, again, it was hard to maintain that 50 stacks aside from the initial burst. Um, so I'm going I'm to go through gear, passives, and talk about how this character is different fr from the other one and kind of give you two different ways you can play the build. Both these versions are life versions currently. I haven't made a CI version yet. Um, I might, in the future, I have a lot of good CI gear and standards so I can mess around, um, but we'll, we'll see. Alright, so simple things to begin off here. Um, the biggest change since, in terms of, of the entire build, besides that mechanical change, is I've changed one support on my main link. As you can see, it is no longer um, green, green, blue, blue, red. We've dropped increased duration for a blue support. Um, this character character's his blade vortex is currently level 19. Um, take that into account when you're because the DPS will improve obviously with level 20. But we're running blade vortex, control destruction, spell echo, poison, all the same as before. But we've swapped our increased duration for increased critical damage because we no longer need the increased duration to reach um, max stacks and maintain them. So we might as well do more damage output. Current tooltip DPS is 14k. This spikes to over 25k when I have all my power chargers and frenzy chargers and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's the only setup that's changed. Uh, we still run a high armor shield with self-cast immortal call, enduring cry, and increased duration. This makes you also regenerate more life from enduring cry, if you didn't know that. Uh, good armor helm here. I still need to actually hit a good, a reasonable enchant. But we have casting damage taken, arctic breath, GMP, molten shell for some extra armor. We have a spell damage dagger here. Uh, it doesn't matter how slow your dagger is. If it has an attack speed roll, the attack speed roll will benefit Whirling Blades, whose base uh, attack time is 2.6 seconds, regardless of what weapon you use. So that's important to know. Um, so a faster weapon doesn't have faster Whirling Blades. A slow weapon with an attack speed roll will actually go faster than a fast weapon with a no attack speed roll. Here we run our Blasphemy Warlord's Mark for Life Leech and Endurance Charge Gain. Actually, does stun things occasionally, which is pretty nice. And then we run Hatred. Um, and then we have Reckoning, Vengeance, Summon Flame Golem, and Blind. You can swap Blind for Cole against Azaro. There's a very specific reason why we have counterattacks that I'll talk about uh, with the passive tree. <coughs> and uh, Decree of Blades is pr pretty Decree or Commandment of Blades if you have the Uber Lab enchant. Are probably the best enchantments you can have on your gloves this build because it's a high physical damage spell which scales with the passive tree. Uh, your boots, uh, I could get better boots, but we got a nice enchant here and I haven't needed it. And if I really wanted to, I could upgrade them, but I, I haven't. So we got Whirling Blades, Faster Attacks, Fortify, and Flicker. Flicker is really nice to close gaps and nice if you like to mess around in PvP. And then we got Life and Resist on our Amulet and on our ring. It's important to note that strength rolls help boost your life total. We've got an okay diamond ring here with strength and life and regeneration and some res all res and a pretty good rustic sash here. Uh, I run, I'm currently running three life flasks and an armor flask and I have some swaps from my armor flask for a shock immunity. I use this for the pale council and a curse immunity that I'd use on some maps or maybe in PvP. Uh, if you wanted to, say, swap out this flask for an Edziri flask for a, some more DPS or another flask of your choice, that's fine. I would not recommend dropping your instant flask or your surgeon's flask on this character 
Make sure you have an anti-bleed. Mine's on my Quicksilver flask, so because if you see like corrupting blood, you're going to hit 20 stacks almost instantly. So this is something that you want there. All right. So passive tree wise, um, we are an assassin. Use lighting, toxic delivery, noxious strike, unstable infusion, and deadly infusion. This stuff for crit scaling is pretty obvious, and this makes you have full power charges pretty much all the time with blade vortex. But I want to talk about this note here. So our attacks cause bleed. We attacks can aim against poisoned enemies, so enemies we fight are pretty much always going to be poisoned because of the poison from our blade vortex. And then if we kill a maimed enemy, we get 30% skill duration. Well, how do we actually maim enemies? Well, if you're whirling blazing around through packs, like I typically do, um, your, your blade vortex is going to hit them first and poison them, and if they're not dead in one shot, then your blade, then your Whirl will hit them and probably maim them, and then when they die, you'll get some skill duration for your poison, your blade vortex, and your uh, blood rage if you're using that, which I do. My blood rage is socketed here on my chest. Uh, and then the big thing with toxic delivery is poison from critical strikes deals double damage, which is huge. But the cool thing here is that with a 20% of physical damage, it's extra chaos against bleeding, which is a huge damage boost for blade vortex. We can cause bleeding because we have noxious strike. We can cause bleeding through random counterattacks from Reckoning and Vengeance, and also from our movement skills. So this can potentially be a, a big damage boost against bosses if they hit you and your counterattack clips them and makes them bleed, or you're like whirling across them and that kind of thing. It's not up all the time, but when it does, you can usually see the boss's health drop a lot faster. Alright, so let me close my inventory here. Alright, uh, then they've added this new art to the tree, which is kind of nice. So there's two differences between this character and my original character. The first one is that I have this life, re uh, there's a few, but the first one is this life regeneration cluster here. This allows me to maintain my blood rage for attack speed and friendly charge generation without degenerating. And then I have critical multiplier instead of critical chance, which my other character has. And then the other character hasn't spec as much into this area and has spent six points to get dual curse. So pretty much his tree is exactly the same. He's a level higher. Uh, but he doesn't have these three nodes here, and he doesn't have these three nodes here. Instead, he's gone up to dual curse. Uh, he's a level higher, but he treats the same because he didn't take a power charge in Merciless, and instead has this power charge here. So I could save a point on him. Um, it's important to note that this character has a higher life total than my other character, even though they use the same skill tree, essentially, in terms of life nodes. His gear is a little worse. Uh, in terms of the, the, the flat life from it, and his strength total is a little lower. And I think he actually even has an extra life node over here. So, it's it's just a matter of a little bit, of being a little bit different because different gear and that kind of thing. Um, he also doesn't have as good role in an anatomical knowledge tool. This is the best place you can put it. There's a whole bunch of int here because you, you hit this node. So it's 8% life and 23 life. And then again, we use an energized armor to convert this whole cluster into life and armor. Alright, I'm going to show you the other character, um, just for another option, and then there's going to be a gameplay video where I'm going to feature um, Mizarro, Uber Zara on a net series run. Alright, so this is the dual, dual cursor version with Vulnerability and Warlord's Mark. Vulnerability uh, scales the damage of Poison Blade Vortex very well because has it both a damage over time component and a physical damage component, so we make our hits do even more damage, and then they take even more damage because they took more damage. And it's pretty strong. You can see this character has, has a spell damage and a critical multiplier dagger, so his, his Whirling Blades is a little slower. This is a skinned with a bricked combs, um, and I haven't switched out his increased duration yet because I've been playing my other character. His shield it has a little more armor, but a little less life. We have a ta an old talisman, because that's when, I, again, when I first played this character. He runs at zero step. I could get a better enchant here. Um, and he, again, has to create blades on his gloves. And I'm, I had a Vol Clarity, um, and I'm only running Vengeance instead of Vengeance and Reckoning. But you don't need Vol Clarity anymore, because, again, as you can only stack 20. I use this to stack to 50 for um, at Ziri. Um, but you don't need this anymore, so uh, this is going to be removed on this version of the character. Um, he also, as you can see, he does have a Blade Vortex damage enchant, and you can see his tooltip DPS isn't as high. It's 14k. It's not. It's, excuse me. It's 4k lower without any charges. Again, that's because I don't have the critical multiplier on my chest. If I did have that critical multiplier, 
um, this character's DPS would probably be a little bit higher. Um, well, actually, no. It would, you know, he also doesn't have hatred. That's an important thing to note. So his his actual DPS is probably higher at this point than the other character, even though his tooltip is lower because of vulnerability. So if you if you, if you're gonna play the non-regen version where you don't have enough regen to sustain blood rage, i.e., no growth and decay cluster here, you can spend and then no spell damage over here. You can spend those six points to path into Whispers of Doom to enable the dual curse. As you can see, um, his passives his uh. I didn't get the um, power charge in Merciless like I did with my other character because this is when I first played it and didn't know everything about Blade Vortex and there's a power charge here. So I could potentially respec that and get an extra point. But as you can see this character has about um, a little less than 100 less life than my other character even though he's a higher level and has an extra life node. Again that's just because of gear differences. This character actually has more percentage life on his tree and his anatomical knowledge roll isn't as good, but it's only 1%. Um, yeah, so that's going to pretty much going to conclude just the gear and the general updates. If you want to see the build play in 2.4, then there's going to be another video for that. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.